Thank you, sir, for your kind introduction. Uh, dear friends, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the tips and tricks for to doing a total hip replacement in dysplastic hips. I am obliged to Dr. Bhaiva Bagaria, Dr. Sitish, Dr. Arjun, Dr. Farooq, and uh, Dr. Siddharth, and the whole team of, uh, you know, HN Reliance Hospital for inviting me here. The first and most important point is the selection of the patient. If you get an x-ray like this, where the hip is dislocated and there's a deformity on the femur, don't get away with it and take, take the decision of doing a hip replacement surgery, unless pain is present. Pain at rest, pain at night, pain which hampers activities of daily living. If it is present, then you can take a decision for arthroplasty or else leave this patient alone because uh, without pain, anything you do, it will land up in a more deteriorating condition than the present condition. Now the complexity of reconstruction in dysplastic hip depends on the degree of anatomical abnormality. So whether it is a dysplasia like this or a subluxation like this or the dislocation like this. So gradually, you know, the difficulty of dealing with this condition, you know, increases uh, when the degree of subluxation or dislocation increases. Pro classification is a useful classification in this procedure. Pro type 1, where there is less than 50% of subluxation, type 2, 50 to 75%, type 3, 75 to 100%, and type 4 is 100% dislocation. But how do you decide what is 50%, what is 100%? Suppose you take this x-ray, draw a reference line, that is the inter teardrop line before the planning, and the distance from the medial side of the head neck junction to this reference line, measure this distance, and compared with the vertical diameter of the opposite head. That gives you this 50% or 50 to 75% or whatever. So this you need to compare, but when there is a bilateral subluxation or bilateral dislocation, then a useful way is to measure the height of the pelvis, that you take the upper margin of the iliac crest, lower margin of the ischial tuberosity, measure the height of the pelvis, and the height of the vertical height of the head is taken as the 20% of the height of the pelvis. Next, you measure your intertrial drop line and measure the distance and compare and decide that what type of, what grade of dislocation or subluxation is this. This is useful in planning and that will help you. Next thing, the anatomical changes which occur in female, in the femoral side in a dysplastic hip, that head is usually small and deformed. And neck is narrow and short and there is marked antiversion. Sometimes you have to excise the neck completely till the calcar in order to avoid this antiversion. The greater trochanter is short and posterior. Sometimes you have to do a greater trochanter osteotomy and I know uh, relocate the greater trochanter in proper anatomical position during the surgical procedure. The femoral neck is narrow and the femoral canal usually is narrow and there is an anterior bowing of the femur. So that is that you have to keep in mind when you are preparing the femoral canal, otherwise you may land up in perforation. Whereas in the acetabular side, as you can see, the canal is very shallow and it is sloping. It is deficient superior laterally because of the subluxation or dislocation as well as anteriorly. That's why while dreaming you have to be very careful not to ream the anterior wall because you may land up in the deficient anterior wall. So reamers should go more of a reaming on the posterior aspect. There is a small anteroposterior dimension and hence uh, the cup size usually decided by the anteroposterior diameter of the canal, hence uh, uh, it is usually smaller. And uh, because of poor bone quality, because the bone is not loaded because of subluxation and dislocation, that's a uh, bones are osteoporotic or osteopenic, so you have to be careful while dreaming. Sometimes we do in the hand dreaming as well. And uh, worse changes is seen in subluxation and dislocation. And if you see a, you know, false acetabulum like this, and this is the true acetabulum, always try to restore the center of rotation, bring the center of rotation down so that uh, you avoid this false acetabulum because always the maximum bone stock remains in the true acetabulum. The false acetabulum on the bone stock is very poor, and if you leave a superior center of rotation, that increases the joint reaction forces, and chances of failure is high when you put the cup in the false acetabulum. In addition to that, you cannot neglect the soft tissues. The abductors are usually horizontal, and it is tented over the head of the femur. The psoas, adductors, rectus femur is the, all the muscles are contracted, tendons are contracted, and you have to do an adequate release in the proximal part of the femur. Uh, depending upon how much you are going to bring the center of rotation down. 
the capsule is usually elongated and thickened capsule you have to excise the capsule in this case uh, before doing the closure and neurovascular bundles like sciatic and vessels are usually shortened this is one of the conditions where you have to do a adductor tenotomy before giving the lateral position usually you know we do adductor tenotomy you assess for the adductor tightness after you have done your total hip replacement and make the patient supine and then you do a adductor tenotomy but remember this is one of the conditions where you have to do pre operative adductor tenotomy then you give the lateral position otherwise it will be difficult for your you know uh, to bring the head down into the true acetabulum the planning usually involved this is a normal x ray where you can see that you know interspinous line inter tear drop line and the uh, line uh, over the superior margin of the uh, acetabulum they remains parallel to each other when you draw a uh, line inclination line in 40 to 45 degree inclination that usually touches the lateral margin of the acetabulum and here you check for the you know limb discrepancy but in case of dysplastic uh, hip, when you draw these lines, you see these two lines, they are either diverge or converge because there is a deficiency of acetabulum. When you draw from the normal side a line parallel to an inter-tier drop line, you see the deficiency and usually this is the part which you need to reconstruct. You have to put bone grafts or you need to put impaction bone grafting or you may put, uh, you know, uh, trabecular metal augments which are available now in the market. And when you draw this uh, line of inclination of the cup, you see that, that it tends to go away from the lateral margin of the acetabulum. That means you expect that cup remains exposed laterally when you put the cup on the table. So depending upon how much part of the cup is exposed, you need to cover it up or you can leave about 20% of the cup uncovered in this type of cases. So coming to acetabulum, the components, usually uncemented implants components are preferred on this side. But you need to keep small cups standby because uh, usually the manufacturer they do not provide you cups uh, bigger than you know smaller than 40, 42 like that. So you keep 38 or 36 cups if they are available in the armamentarium. Usually now all these companies they have smaller size multi hole cups available, and uh, you should have a 22 head ready in case if you are using a polyethylene liner. Then 22 head you have to use in this type of cups in order to keep adequate you know polyethylene thickness so that to prevent wear. And location of the socket, you have to be extremely important. So when there is a type 1 dysplasia, you need to locate the true center of acetabulum. The technique of rimming is that first you go vertically, a, a rim and in order to reach the floor, then you can change the direction of the rimmer, giving the desired degree of inclination and antiversion. And uh, there you rim and till you reach the subchondral bone. This is one of the patient, as you can see, this is the planning what we have done. So after placing the trial cup, you can see this much thick of bone is remaining. So you have to rim it inside medially. So you have to medialize this cup. And as you can see here that there is superiorly, there is some deficiency remaining. So on the table, if I see, we may have to put a graft in this patient. But after you medialize cup, this is the lateral view. We see if there is any bowing of the femur. As you can see here, the cup is how dysplastic or how superficial is the cup. But after rimming, after medializing the cup, we realize, we realize that there is no graft is required. And uh, then you can see in the, this is the follow up of this patient uh, about three to four years. And this is in the lateral view, as you can see here, how the cup is sitting well, both in the AP and lateral views. Now in subluxation type two and type three crow type, you prefer to restore the hip center. And hence, there is, you may accept mild elevation of the hip center, but usually structural femoral head autograft may be needed in order to bring the center of rotation down and in order to fill the gap superiorly. Avoid placing the graft beyond the lateral margin of the component, beyond the lateral margin of the acetabulum, because that graft remains unloaded. And when that graft remains unloaded, there is a possibility that there may be resorption of the graft and leads to loosening of the cup as well. So you take the femoral head which is available on the table, then cut it into two halves, denude the catalyst and then put it temporarily on the superior margin of the acetabulum, fix with the k -wire. Then you put your rimmers inside and uh, then rim it in order to fit the match the acetabulum. Then finally when you put the screws, see that uh, the trabeculae must be aligned in the weight bearing axis. That means your screws should direct towards the sacroiliac joint so that it is along the direction of the trabeculae so that graft, uh, uh, it helps in the compression of the graft and helps, helps in the incorporation of the graft in the nat native acetabulum. 
so this is the patient suppose this is a little animation that you dislocate the hip then you put the graft superiorly then fix with the screws and direct the screws as you can see here towards the sacroiliac joint and next you put your cup next you prepare your femur and reduce the femur so this is in type 2 and type 3 but remember the cup should have good you know host bone contact at least 50 to 60% of the host bone contact has to be there if the host bone contact is less than 50% then you have to use a cemented cup you don't have a option graft contact with the cup doesn't help because graft doesn't lead to adequate bone on growth on the cup now what happens to the graft in the long term why you put graft because should revision become necessary the healed graft would provide a good bone structure for the future reconstruction and you can the revision should be more or less like a primary hip replacement surgery now in type 4 or crow type 4 you need to restore the anatomic hip center you can use the augment deficiencies with the ball graft or nowadays trabecular metal augments which are available but it is are expensive but you can use them augment uh, porotic intra infra acetabular bone with impacts on cancerous bone graft because the bone stock is not good hence you have to impact with uh, the taking graft from the head and avoid medial wall perforation this is little controversial this is a paper by larry dor et al where 24 cases they have breached the medial wall and they have put the mercilized graft there and they have put the cup there but uh, you know many people do not prefer this technique of uh, breaching the medial wall in order to medialize the center of rotation now coming to femoral side in dysplasia and subluxation type 1 2 3 the main problem is the antiversion increase antiversion so you may have to do a neck cut to reach the level of the you know calcar or near the uh, near the lesser trochanter so that you avoid that antiversion there are three solutions to adjust with this thing you can use a uncemented component like a modular variety which is available in the market now where you can adjust the antiversion according to this but when you increase the modularity again there are chances of metallosis chances of uh, you know uh, metal particle degeneration we do not know the long term outcome of this modular components you can use a cemented uh, you know stem cemented uh, stem is showing good outcome where you can adjust your antiversion the vertical offset and horizontal uh, offset as uh, dr furnish told you in the first lecture or you can use a uncemented femoral component with a femoral derotation osteotomy if there is a much of uh, deformity is present in type 4 the alternatives is that i can you can go ahead with a trochanteric osteotomy then do uh, advancement so you can use either a cemented or uncemented depending upon the age of the patient and the bone quality or more or less now everybody doing a soft trochanteric shortening soft trochanteric osteotomy and shortening and realignment osteotomy is done through a transfemoral approach and you can use again cemented or uncemented stem this asram stem is extremely useful when there is a metaphyseal or diaphyseal mismatch so that you put the distal part in the diaphysis and then you reconstruct the metaphyseal region or else you know wagner stem manufactured by the gmer it is a tapered stem and hence it helps after doing osteotomy to act like a intramedullary nail so this is little bit of uh, animation again you do a trochanteric osteotomy then uh, you dislocate the hip reconstruct the acetabulum by putting graft or whatever way next you prepare the femur and reduce it then you reattach the trochanter there this is trochanteric osteotomy and advancement but most uh, recently most of us we are doing soft trochanteric shortening and realignment the advantage being it is the achieves the best uh, deformity correction and excellent socket exposure you can restore the offset and you do not require any trochanteric osteotomy and it's a disadvantage of reattaching the trochanter but the disadvantage is this is a complex procedure at least as a beginner one should not do it and there is a potentiality of non union but now and is putting grafts and uh, achieving compression we have avoided this non union to a greater extent there may be slightly longer recovery time it is indicated in younger patients and patients with uh, of course uh, when there is soft trochanteric angulation or previous osteotomies has been done then it is extremely helpful because it corrects the uh, angulation as well so this is little bit of animation that just below the lesser trochanter you first do the osteotomy then approach the acetabulum through the osteotomy site then prepare your acetabulum fix the acetabulum next uh, you prepare the proximal fragment and put your trial component in the proximal fragment and reduce the hip and uh, now pull the distal fragment and 
fragment and see that how much osteotomy is required, how much segment of bone to be removed. Next you reduce the hip and this graft which has been taken out uh, the fragment you can you know you can divide into two parts and opposite and do a wiring and these are the this is the patient when both sides uh, the subtrochandry shortening osteotomy has, has been done and this is the outcome at the end of about uh, three to four years. The subtrochandry shortening and realignment is essentially to know the altered anatomy to altered uh, anatomy and it requires a careful exposure it restores the normal hip joint biomechanics of course the patient will have shortening of the leg but that is an acceptable solution it is a very satisfying procedure and as i told you definitely it is not for a uh, beginner surgeon so take home message dear friends you must understand that what is dysplasia what is subluxation what is dislocation you must understand what is crow type classification you know, soft tissues, there is a stressed capsule, there is a soft tissue contracture, you may have to do an adductor tenotomy before the surgery and you have to do adequate soft tissue release in order to bring the center of rotation down. Restore the center of rotation and sometimes a little high center of rotation is acceptable. Rim the acetabulum properly first in the vertical direction, then again you change the inclination and antiversion. Be careful about the thinning of the anteroval and superlateral deficiency in the acetabulum. You must learn the bone grafting technique. You have to divide the head and put it in the superlateral portion and direct your screws towards the sacroiliac joints along the, you know, trabeculae of the uh, acetabulum. You must understand what are the anatomic changes in the femur and accordingly you have to prepare your femur and one must learn the technique of soft osteotomy which is extremely helpful in crow type 4 uh, femur. I thank you for a patient hearing. Thank you very much, Dr. Monty.